So hello, I'm Doug Smink. I'm the program director for the General Surgery Residency. I'm also the vice chair for education. I'm also the associate chair for education in the Department of Surgery. And I'm going to talk to you about what we do for both students and residents in our department using oral exams. So just to start, I can explain a little bit about what we do with our student oral exams. Uh, these are performed or administered at the end of the surgery clerkship. And we have two exams with two different faculty for any given student. Uh, the student will have one exam in GI oncology where they receive two questions and a separate exam in trauma, fluids, and electrolytes where they receive two questions. I'll talk in the next slide about what the students are assessed on, but it's multiple aspects um, and goes beyond just their medical knowledge and tries to get at cognitive higher level thinking as well as some elements of professionalism and behavior. I would love to take credit for these exams, but I must give credit to our prior and current clerkship directors. Uh, these were developed under David Soy Bell and then expanded under Lisa Breen, who are our former clerkship directors and now are under the direction of Dr. Reza Ascari. You can see on this slide the various components that we assess during the student oral exams. One is simply clinical knowledge and what is their fund of knowledge, but more importantly, how do they apply that knowledge? And we look at their cognitive processes to help us determine that application of knowledge. We do assess them on the pace at which they answer the questions, uh, on how thoroughly they are able to answer them and whether they are able to focus on the important topics, and then also their decisiveness, because we will often ask them not only for a differential diagnosis, but also for a final diagnosis and a surgical treatment decision. We also like to look at their critical thinking ability. So initially, we'll start with a generic or basic STEM for the clinical question, but then after they have presumably arrived at the appropriate answer or treatment for that patient scenario, we may change the, or modify the scenario, perhaps changing the gender of the patient or the age or some aspects of the presentation and assess their ability to adapt to change in the scenario. We're also very interested in their professional and interpersonal skills, so we do the, give them uh, assessment and feedback on their professionalism, uh, on their confidence, and on how they communicate their answers. Here you can see some of the uh, recent data both before and after the advent of EPAs on grading in the clerkship oral exams. I thought this would be interesting not only to show how well our students do, but also sh to show a little bit of the impact on uh, an EPA grading style uh, for the grades that they received. You can see the pre-EPA era, a large majority of the students were viewed as proficient, almost 80 percent, and about 20 percent were seen as still growing. Interestingly, not a single student was put in the category of does not demonstrate. But when we transitioned to EPAs, uh, still with a three-point scale, looking at entrustable, emerging, or pre-entrustable, uh, we found that pre-entrustable was actually uh, used about 3% of the time, with the distribution of entrustable and emerging being similar to the pre-EPA era. I think this really just speaks to the utility of EPAs and the nomenclature used and to use the terminology pre-entrustable makes it more comfortable for a faculty member to put the student in that category. I think also, importantly, you see that the large majority of our students do quite well in these examinations, even though they are a little bit atypical for them and, and in some instances uncomfortable for them as uh, to take an oral style exam. In the surgery residency, we also have a history of using oral exams in assessment. Just to give you a sense of why we do this, the American Board of Surgery, who certifies our graduates to say that they're uh, board certified in surgery, actually does use oral exams in the board certification process. So in surgery, uh, specifically in general surgery, after graduation, to be board certified, a residency graduate first has to take a multiple choice exam. This is a written computer-based exam um, with a pass rate across the nation of almost 90%. Following that written exam, if they pass, they are then admitted to the oral examination, uh, which has a national pass rate of 83 uh, percent. It is required for a surgeon who wishes to be board certified to pass both of these examinations. So in preparation for the oral exam required for certification, we do a similar series of mock oral examinations. Ultimately, this is uh, building towards a mock oral examination we do in May of each year where all of our senior residents, PGYs 3, 4, and 5, take mock oral exams. In order to prepare them for this, we do monthly practice sessions where a single faculty member will do an oral exam with 
typically a single resident. Often we do this in front of uh, their colleagues in order to give the one individual practice, but the other members of the audience a chance to observe good and bad behaviors. The faculty then critiques the uh, examinee, but also gives feedback not only to that examinee, but to the other residents in the audience. Ultimately, we do our mock oral examinations in May. In that instance, we have two examiners in a single room with one examinee, which mimics the American Board of Surgery examination. These examinations last for approximately 30 minutes, and the examinee will go through three or four questions in that time frame, again to mimic the American Board of Surgery examination. We give them immediate feedback on both their clinical decision making, but also their test taking skills their communication and their professionalism. Just looking at our data from last year on these internal mock oral examinations, our pass rate was 65%. I think that is in line with what I would expect as these are not all residency graduates, but include PGYs threes, four, and five. Um, in addition, this is in many instances, for instance, for the PGY threes that first experience with an oral examination. That being said, our overall pass rate on the National American Board of Surgery examinations is above the national average, thankfully. Just to give you a sense of the feedback that we give our residents on the mock oral examinations, these are the categories that we use for our assessment. So we do assess their clinical management, and we want to know that they make appropriate decisions and arrive at the appropriate treatment for the patient. We also will ask them to describe the surgical procedure, for instance, that they would recommend performing on the patient. But we also give them feedback on their body language and their appearance. We want them to understand how to how to sit, how to make eye contact, and to make sure that they're using the appropriate dress that they were going to wear for the actual examination. We're very interested in their thought process, so we will give them feedback on uh, how they arrived at their decisions, but also how they communicate those to the examiners. So uh, we talk a lot about eye contact, about clear communication, about using the appropriate pace of the answer to the question.